Hello and welcome to the Cowboy for Game Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast. I'm your host Jake. Today I'm joined by Ben from Nolan TCG. Hello. And Harry from Locals. What's up, fellas? Noted blue collar tree. Yes. <laughs> uh, how was our week in Yu-Gi-Oh? Uh, let's start with you, Harry. Um, my week was minimal at best. I've just come back from being ill, so I've only played Sunday today and then the week before. Uh, I've been playing Runic Fur Hire for the last I don't know, month and a half or so. Whenever you hear Jake complaining, yeah, yeah, I'm I am Jake's uh, bane of existence. Um, for now, yeah, um, yeah, that goes all right. Played round one in, against Leo and watched my Folgo get put in the spell and trap zone, so that was fun. Um, <laughs> game two played against Jesse playing the Orcist uh, horror stuff and Ain't that. Man. No, 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 no. Or, or, oh, just, just August, August. August. Okay. August Horus with the with the Resonator package. Yeah. And then um, round three played against Jake, and I, th- I think I only just won that because of sequencing towards the end. I threw real bad. <laughs> I did look over and Harry was puppet locked, but then Harry was still playing, and I was like, that didn't work. Well, yeah. Well, that's the thing. You just like searched a bunch of stuff, and like I played through it, but my being greedy meant um, that I'd kind of fucked it up. But I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, so, so okay. in, in the instance of getting puppet locked, it was just a matter of, I am just going to resolve Fountain, draw three, and then just hope that I draw non-engine. And by non-engine, I mean more runic cards. And it, it worked, so. Yeah, that does work. Yeah, that was, that was my work. week. Uh, ben. Ben's turn. Uh, I went X1 both locals. Uh, what did I lose to? Oh, I realistically didn't lose Tuesday. Um, I lost, but yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, today, uh, things are going great with the deck. I now, as of today, finally, I'm playing like full power with like your populace and your uh, princess. So that's good. Like, makes the deck really cool. Um, really appreciating how good Nibiru is in the current format now. So I'm probably going to be main decking that again. Uh, I'm going to do some shifting. I might take bells out, putting in the Nibiru. I just need to cut one more card to fit the Nibiru into the main. Uh, just because that card's like really good being able to like nib your opponent gives yourself a card and then like it doesn't matter if they imperm or negate the normal summon because you can just link to going to heater uh, take whatever you want off them uh, then you can either go into princess or you can steal their own princess if you've held long enough or you can take their flame bow you just make sure not to put it back in their graveyard um, and then you just kind of pop off from there it's 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 quite good really enjoying the deck I'm um, playing fire king uh, snake Eyes at the moment I'm strongly considering switching over to just pure Snake Eyes just because I want to play more power spells I found that in my matchups where I'm losing that's what I'm losing to but at the same time the Snake there's just ebbs and flows that yeah positives and negatives everywhere like if you play the Fire King the Fire King stuff can get you out of a lot of trouble sometimes um, but also playing Fire Kings gets you into that trouble like getting your field spell Cosmic isn't the end of the world because you can still do other shit if you've gone full combo into it. Mm. Yeah. The issue is, like, if you didn't play the field spell, the cosmic wouldn't matter so much. So it's a bit kind of like, you can still keep going, but at the same time, uh, like, I'm just kind of considering just, like, disregarding it and just being like, I'll just play regardless. Yeah. Because, like, if you get cosmic, if you just leave the board, your Ambler Way will die and summon back your IP anyway. And then, of course, your flame burst floats into the two when you still have the full combo for uh viking just sitting in hand so it's like it doesn't really stop you yeah. getting hit with that because you can still just like go ip into something you can then do whatever you want with your snake eyes package and then you can still when you make the big xes you can still bring back your print your princess from grave popping the big xes and your opponent's monster and then the big xes soul charges you brought back and then you just have game next turn yeah so like it's it's good it's just I'd like to play more breakers. Um, we could just see a case where I just smokescreen side into entire Snake Eyes deck out of the side deck just to be able to like to take out what the 10 Viking cards that I have in my main deck Yeah. put in the Snake Eyes stuff and then like 6 other hand traps. Now that I've said that out loud I might try that. There was a there was a list floating around that was um the the Fire King Snake Eye that smoke screens into Rescue Ace. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was because the, the the things that Fire King lose to isn't what Rescue Ace loses to you know, mm. a fair portion at least that was the the reasoning that they provided. Yeah. 
So it's like they're going to side in, you know, like Cosmic Cyclones, for example, for yeah. the field development. It's like, it's sick, I've taken it out. Yeah. Wonderful. Oh, yes. I mean, the it's history of a, it is that, like, effective smoking, smoke screening has done very well in the past. It's just, it's very hit and miss sometimes like, as to when it actually goes. The more I think about it, the more I'm kind of playing as well. I just don't think, like, getting your... I, I just don't think it matters getting your um, field spell cosmic. No, if it gets cosmic early on, like you said, you just fly back into the rest of your board anyway. Yeah, if your opponent doesn't have a response to your combo, a cosmic's not going to save them. Yeah. So, like... Yeah. We'll see how it goes. I might test that theory um, and run into that. Doesn't mean I can change my side deck up a bit. We'll, I'll mess around with the main and... I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. That's going to be the deliberation for the next couple of weeks on the podcast, is can Ben come up with ways to play his deck better? Anyway, Jake, how's your week? My week's all right. Um, I can't remember what I went on Tuesday. That was the last time I played Hawkist. I think it did I think I did okay. I think I did X1. Um, and I lost to, like, burn damage, so, like, it doesn't count. Um... <laughs> And then today, I've pivoted on to what is likely going to be what I play for uh, YCS, which is Branded. Um, still getting used to new lines and things, so a couple things to change. But yeah, it's um, it's not the most ideal way that you have to play it these days, but it is the way that I will be playing it, which is to do the lock with the puppet, just because it is so very strong. Um, so yeah, still testing bits and pieces of that. Um, so today, the, like I lost one round because of like a difference in damage. Like I think I was like down by like 400 life points or something. Um, and then I lost to Harry in the last game because I got greedy and summoned something off Quem when I didn't need to summon something off Quem. And I would have like I filled up all my monster zone, so I couldn't then puppet lock him again. Ah, okay. It also helped that I um. I freezing cursed your mirror jade to banish Twice. him. Yeah, so I freezing cursed uh, negate the mirror jade, and then I draw for turn the second freezing curse to then negate it again. So I was like, oh yeah, I can. Did you try that. to use it on back to back turns? Hmm? If mirror jade is negated, you can. Okay. Has to resolve to then not be able to activate the next turn. Okay, just checking that. Please check. uh, refer to uh, Rinbrum for further information. He's asked us to refer to other Viking <laughs> cards. Not Viking cards, branding cards. There Sorry. You go. I yeah, was only well, thinking we'll, about relevant things, my well, bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Anyway, Harry, do you believe Jake succumbed to peer pressure in switching back to playing his cards? No, not, not necessarily. Like, just having a deck that goes, I'll summon Gimme Puppet and eff effectively win the game. I think it's just objectively correct. I like, think Jake has succumbed to peer pressure and Harry was supposed to agree with me. Uh huh. You don't have your own gimmick puppet over here, idiot. Anyway, everyone um, in the comment section agrees with Ben. Well, we'll get to that. So, um, <laughs> beginning with news, we start with Master Duel. So um, they are having dual festivals running, or they will be shortly. The first of which is the Legend Anthology, Anthology I hated Acceleration. It. I hate it. So it's much. really not great. It's the ban list makes no sense. <laughs> yeah, like some decks are fine. Like um, Dark Magician's obviously fine. Uh, TG's is obviously fine. I think TG's is because they just released the new stuff, so they want to like, yeah, give it stuff. But also, like most of the good synchro monsters are banned, so it's like you're just playing TG's and yeah. maybe a Quasar. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so I played uh, like the you say synchro deck. Mm -hmm. Junk Speeder is banned. <laughs> it is for every one of these events that they do. Junk Speeder is always banned. It is called Junk Speeder. It is. A you say card. Yeah, but what's the first word? Junk. Yeah, put it in the bin. Get him away. Bad card. Someone, whoever bad card, whoever bad. comes up with a ban list for these events is petrified that that card will break it. You say hater. Yeah. It's bizarre. Because it's also banned for the synchro event we're about to get as well. Yes. Uh, so that's the second event that will be starting on the 19th. Uh, a synchro and Xyz festival. I thought so it was Lynx. Is it not Lynx? No, synchro is Xyz. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, that'll be fun. I'm just going to play the same deck and have it just suck even more. Yeah, well, the problem with the Synchro Xyz Fest is that uh, people can have hand traps in that one. You can have hand traps in the current one. 
Uh, yeah, which is the total of Effect Vela and one Imper. Yeah. That is it. Because Effect Vela is a Yusei card. Yeah. And here we are. Uh, so yeah, in that I've been playing Dark Magician because none of the other decks I have comply. Fair. Or they would comply, but all of their good shit's limited or banned. Loza would be proud. I mean, just being able to one, once a turn banish something is generally more than most decks can handle. Out's the Synchro deck. Because yeah. it has to be destroyed to keep playing. <laughs> Like, you can clear your opponent's board, but then if they banish your boss monster, you don't soul charge back from grave. Yeah, okay. So it's like, yeah. okay, I lost. Sick. Although I ended up, my fix to that problem was I took out uh, Stardust, <laughs> Stardust Warrior, the 10. Yeah. That negates a summon. That is a shit negate. It doesn't actually negate, like, uh, 95% of the cards that summon. So I cut that from my deck, and I put it in Nevada High Paladin instead. Yeah, cut good. Just attack over, halve your opponent's life points. Yeah. Just the fact that I had more than 3,000 attack was the part that I needed. But that fixed my problems. Nirvana hard paddling. He fixing problems. I'm definitely not reading it, so... Yeah. Yeah. You, you don't read the first <laughs> half. The second half of its text is what does stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I think the first half is to do with pendulum specifically. Yeah, it's like when it dies, go back in the scale. If you pen someone something, I don't fucking know. Something, something, blah, blah, blah. But then um, you get halfway down, it's like, if this card inflicts, if it destroys a monster by battle, halve your opponent's life points. I'm like, ooh, that's pretty good. <laughs> um, so yeah, the um, Xyz Synchro Festival will be starting very soon. Um, I oh, think sorry. for, what? I need to, again, point out something that I did that was fun. Uh, so I'm also playing the uh, prize card Synchro, Blood Mephist. <laughs> So at one point I had like nuke my opponent's board, but they had like a monster that I couldn't out. So I had like Nirvana High Paladin Blood Mephist, and like he kept like setting cards, and I was just attacking over it with the Nirvana High Paladin to halve his life, and then the Blood Mephist burned him for what he had in his field. Uh, like, I'm just gonna do this every turn, buddy, until you're either you play and lose, or I kill you. That was fun. Sounds very fun. Um, so yeah, for the <laughs> next festival, um, I'm either gonna play Time Thieves because I have that built. Or I'm going to play the loner deck, which is agents. Okay, but you don't have the link one agent. Hmm? They have a link one. I the link one makes like the whole deck go round. What are you talking about? Agents. They have a link one. Name the link. Ah, no, it points this direction. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to name the link. You've played agents before. You've summoned it against me. Name the link. I don't know. Uh, agent of uh, Uranus. It's a link two. Ah. And it's agent of the moon. Okay. But you don't have that card, JK. You're going to play agents. All it does is foolish burial. That's all it does. Come back next week when Jake's like, Man, I just needed a foolish burial. <laughs> God damn it. So many times I've just needed this effect. But again, I may well just play Time Thieves because Time Thieves is simplistic enough that it'll beat most of the Muppets on the... Yeah. So the, that's fine. The, my point that I'm trying to get here is they've chosen a starter deck where they can't give you all the cards. I mean, is that Good work. like any different to like, oh yeah, here's all the cards available, we're not going to give them to you though? Like, No, it's them saying, uh, sorry we gave you an event where you don't have any decks to play. Play one of these three, but not all of this one. I don't know. It, they've definitely done things like that before where they've just sort of slapped a deck together and it's not been like a competitively viable deck. I came so, up against Stun in one of them and I was like, get rid of your back row, I win. I but, versed yeah. a, interesting probably the wrong word, but it's the only one that comes to mind, um, Time Lord deck. Yep. Um, but they played Legacy of the Duelist. And what Legacy of the Duelist allowed them to do was instead of their draw each turn, they could recycle a monster back from their hand. So they just kept adding back the effect Veiler that they kept <laughs> dropping on me. My, my memory of what happened in my match was uh, my opponent went, uh, summoned a Time Lord, set four, uh, ending the main phase. And I was like, uh, before end of main phase, uh, Veiler your Time Lord. Uh, before end of main phase, uh, Stardust Effect, uh, Summon Satellite Warrior, nuke your entire board. Uh, this now has 7,500 attack. Do you wish to wish to pass? <laughs> yes? Okay, cool. Game. Time Lord's great. That'll, that'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so moving Vailor. into you some more news, uh, of which there's really not a lot. Thankfully, we have a lot of questions this week. I will say that. Um, 
so yeah spoke about where master duel is up to uh we have a full list of the ots 24 is it 25 yeah. no 24 28 24 we've, we've only just gotten 23 at locals haven't we correct yeah we're, yes. we're running on a australia runs on a huge <laughs> delay yeah yeah so they're yeah. they're receiving this in stores in north america right now oh my god when it comes to we ots we may well be the tcg of OC ocs yeah, yeah everyone else sees it first yeah, yeah and yeah. then we get it it's bad enough that the supers in there are for last format uh-huh we're now getting them two formats later yeah yeah speaking of which we know all the ultis obviously chaos yeah. angel rock vanquisher and duster we just got super rare bike for context yeah 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 oh and like super rare preventer and emergency and it's yeah. like yeah if if you own rescue ace and you own the the wanteds and all that just buy the fire king structure decks yeah so uh for supers we have king tiger wang hu uh very timely reprint wang wang um wang hao uh, Unchained Twins Aruha, Labyrinth Shandraglian, Cornfield Coatl, Unchained Soul of Savara, Shavara, uh, DDD Wave Hiking Caesar, uh, was it already a super? Yep, yep. Uh, to be fair, it didn't have a reprint. Mm, no, it didn't, no. I was thinking it did for a second, but I remember that was the American super that was in your collection. <laughs> yes. Uh, Pearly Sleeping Memory, Terrors of the Overroot, uh, Pearly Yeep. Is the... Overroot a super? Yeah. That's a good reprint. Uh, Manadium reframing. Uh, that is all the supers. Uh, and then we have some random... Also still printing pearly cards. I don't mind it because because it's, it is Sleepy Memory, which is the only one of them that doesn't have a foil yet. Oh, they've printed pearly... Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I think they should have done it last ATS back. Oh, realistically, yeah. Like, why not? Now the deck's like barely usable. Yeah. Um, it seems they've reprinted a bunch of those random like hand trap well not even hand trap really like the, the discard to steal monsters so like yeah. Bizer Shock Electric Virus Papa Plant and Marionette Mine because they were like fuck we should have reprinted these a while back we should uh, just give them out play based on Five Flint Lady again very timely because you just murdered him for Noble um, Raider's Wing I suppose that's understandable same with um, Four Strix because Raid Raptor Tings uh, Saphira Queen of Dragons as well Strix, and Himalite yeah yeah didn't that already have an OTS print? Oh. Possibly. It might have been a super before, though. Yeah. I remember. So not, it has the secret in a super, but I don't know where the super came from. Oh, and Ray Raptor Claw's also getting one. Uh, Cyanite Mining. Um, don't really understand why that's getting a common I'll, at this I'll point. I'll take that. I mean, it's a good reprint to have. It's just like, oh yeah, we killed one of the best cyber engines in the game. Here's a card. But Salamane Great's back, Jake. Is it? Yeah, Code of Soul was in the mo was in the last main set. Didn't you hear? No. Didn't you hear? No. But Josh told everyone for the past four months <laughs> that it's in the main set, despite not checking that it was going to be oh, in the main set. It was that's... definitely in the main set. So this is this is much needed reprint. See, that's why I didn't hear because Josh said it. Yeah. I had this realization by the way the other day when he was like looking for salad stuff. He was like, "Oh, since Code of Soul didn't come out," I was like, "What do you mean didn't come out?" He's like, "Yeah, they, it wasn't in the set." And I was like, "Hold up, like." You said for the last five months it was in the set. Yeah. It's not in the set? He's like, no, nah, it wasn't in here. I was like, what made you think it was in the set? He's like, oh, I just had a good feeling. I was like... <laughs> Bro. Oh, Christ. Guys, they're going to reprint Hulk and bring it off the ban list in the next, in the next main set. I have not. I, I just oh, have a good, got a good feeling. feeling. <laughs> God, can that card never come back, please? Holy shit. Um, but the ulties are so cheap. I just sold, they one. Are I just sold one for 20 to lock one. There you go. And now it's in my possession. Yes. Yes. Give that information what you will. Uh, He's and not going to watch the podcast to find out. <laughs> no. Uh, Magispector Tornado and Magispector Tempest. I mean, Dex hold as fuck, so sure. Those are, those are commons? Those are commons. Yeah, commons. Because I know, I think they're already commons in their original print. They are. Yeah. Yeah, they just haven't gotten a print. Like, <laughs> Wasn't Tempest like close, a super? Close to 10. I don't know. Temp I'm fairly certain Tempest was a common because, like... Which one's Tempest? It's it's the solemn strike at home. Explain it, the art. It's the uh, it's the Yardo crow flapping its wings with the, the gusts at the bottom. I don't remember that one. Well, that one. That was a common. Yeah, because it came out the set before Breakers of Shadow, which was yeah. solemn strike. Yeah, that was and Secrets it was, of Eternity. It was. No, I crashed. It was a me. functionally searchable solemn strike, even without the guiding area. Nay. Yeah. That you could play a set before Bosch. So it's like if you're doing Magispector Pepe, that was the advantage over <clears throat> just performing Power Pendulum. Yeah. 
because you got Solomon Strong so got early. You yeah. could just go, oh, you pen summoned? No, you didn't. Yeah, because you summoned the fox and the fox would get the trap. So uh, for all our American and European uh, watchers, um, I mean, Enjoy it's a somewhat not timely reprint for you. Um, but if you feel bad about it, just think of us here down in Australia who won't see it for another three months. I like, they blame Icon for this. I don't blame Icon for this. I blame Konami. The blame it's all be... Jerome's fault. Mm. It's been... Fuck you, Jerome. <laughs> I saw your hair on that stream. Grow Did some. you? Did you? How? Where was it? <laughs> it was a little over here, and a little over there. over here. He's got like the mud patch. <laughs> it, it honestly looked like he was about to prepare himself for a hair transplant because just this bit had like nothing going on. You know, it had some that was over here, but then was also located over here because it went. But that just looks like a grid. Like it just looks like a grid of like little hair follicles that yeah. have just been put in his head. Yeah, That's you know what shocking. they call that? Full head of hair. I respect you, Jerome. <laughs> really did a 180. <laughs> <laughs> um, last thing on product news, uh, we've got the full set spoiler for the Battles of Legend Chapter 1. Uh, it's not great. Um, so not the great. S- I thought this set's fucking fantastic. Why? Because they've just printed a whole bunch of cards that needed reprints in common. They've just been like, you know that regular bulk you get from these shitty sets? This time it's actually decent. Is it? Yes. I don't know if it is. I think it is. I really like this set. I'm not going to buy any. <laughs> like, by all means, I already own all of these cards. <laughs> but like... How did this get located behind this? Sorry, I've just realised that this is not straight. I apologise for the viewers at home who had to put up with that eyesore. We here at Cowboy for Game Yu-Gi-Oh! Podcast strive for the greatest quality in, in every aspect. And having a crooked banner in the background is... Uh, It's just not up to our standards. However, this set is up to our standards because it's actually pretty decent. If you haven't played the game in the last five years and you missed out on the amazing set that was Battles of Legends Season 1, uh, here you go. You get some. They also snuck some reprints in there that were needed. The reason why Jake is complaining is because they reprinted Gimmick Puppet. He paid a lot of money for his. Uh, Incorrect. I've paid nothing for mine. Jake stole his Gimmick Puppet. That's right. Arrest him, policeman. I bought a Gimmick Puppet two days before... <laughs> we were getting to this. <laughs> uh, we should clarify, I'm the guy that buys stuff and then gets banned on the ban list like within a week after I buy it. Um, the, I bought a Gimmick Puppet Nightmare on eBay for like 20 Australian and then two days later, Jake posts in the group chat that the uh, reprint has been announced. To be fair, <laughs> it's not supposed to be the set. <laughs> But they just put it in there anyway. Yeah. Yeah. At no point was it printed in Battles of Legend. They've yep. just gone. Ha ha. In in fairness, for twenty dollars, I'm not bothered because every other listing on eBay before that one was about forty, and then it got it got bought out on TCG Player to the point where the only listing was for eighteen hundred dollars. Was it My in God. Number Hunters? Yeah, Number Hunters from like 2012, 2013. That was the only print it's had since then. Does this make Number Hunters canonically a Battles of Legend set? I would argue yes. Maybe. I'm, I'm not familiar I'm not... with pack lore. Like, <laughs> like card lore I'm okay with, but the packs that there's cards in, no, I'll, I'll, I'll sit down to that one. I'm a genius of pack lore, and the answer is yes. <laughs> you know how I, I come up to that answer? Because they reprinted number cards in Battles of Legend. So, speaking of which, uh, so they've got... The way it's packaged is you get one promo, and then it's like two ultras in each pack, and you get three packs per box, yes. something like that. Um, so the secret promos are Big Eye... Um, yep. Black Blaster Soldier, Soldier of Chaos. I'm not yep. sure which one that is. I that think it might the be the one that's the like... The Link 3? I think so, yeah. Is it? Okay. So en- Envoy of Beginning is the... Yeah, yeah I'll ju- the one that I thought it might be because like it's only had one printing is that more recent one where it's like in your draw phase, reveal it, and you can add a ritual spell to your hand instead. I thought it might have been that, but I wasn't sure. Um, but anyway, um, E-Hero Stratos of the original art. Uh, Absolute Good. Zero, Gamseal, uh, Dad... No, sorry, Pendulum Dad. Yeah, because they re... It's the... Oh, the Xyz Dad. Xyz yeah. Dad. Yeah, because they reprinted all of those jump hearts. Oh. Uh, which were, again, original Battles of Legends of Cards. Uh, Quite Neo, expensive, some of them. Neos Wiseman, mm. uh, the Time Lord Synchro, which uh, for the Time Lord fans here is a level 10, so I'm not sure how you make it in Time Lords. Uh, uh, and first printing as well on that. Second. second. It had a promo printing. Congrats uh, to the, all three Time Lord players getting that synchro, but don't buy the set because you've already got them. Yes. Yeah. They can now just legally play them in Australia. 
Oh yeah, okay, yeah. Because I think it was jump. It would have. Oh, yeah, like it was jump, it was jump. It was either jump or jump adjacent, something like that. So it wasn't legal. Here. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Um, extra hero infernal devicer cyber slash harpy lady harpy, harpy lady, lady. Harpy lady. Um, I got stuck because I'm moving on to the ultras. Um, so I just had a flashback. Remember when we got a summon sorceress? Yeah, and it was a jump promo, so we didn't get it for like another four months. Same yeah. with Link Rero. Yeah, yeah. Those were the days. No, they weren't. Because I remember, yeah, Link like all the level eater combo and grinding golem combos were just not relevant for us because like yeah. Link Rero didn't exist. You didn't have the Link Rero's to go into like Actually, a cash so dragon or... wasn't available then either. And no. I'm no. sure that that was part of their combo line in Japan. Yeah, but we then didn't get that on a delay. But. Yeah, Grinder Golem got banned before we. Yeah, yeah, before we could even look at the cards. Combo. Yeah. yeah. Fucking Australia really is the area where they're just like. That was also. Oh, you want to play Peak Yu Gi Oh? No. Um, so for Ultra reprints in here, we have White Aura Whale, Judgment Dragon, uh, Minerva Xyz, Sage with Eyes Blue, Evil Swarm, Exertion Knight, uh, Orgoth the Relentless, Flying Sorry. Elephant, uh, Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord, which is a needed one. Uh, Borrow Guard Dragon, which is not a needed one. Uh, didn't have a reference. D- didn't need one. Anyone out there clamoring for Switching not being able to be defense? destroyed by card effects? Yes. All of the scrubs. Yes. Uh, Cyber Dragon, uh, both original and alternate arts. Uh, the Stratos alternate art only. Borrow Sword Dragon alternate art. <laughs> uh, I actually want that. Ew. Because I my Boral Sword Dragon went missing, so I now I have a gold rare. That's okay, because it's not really missing. You know exactly where it is. No, I, I, I'm fairly sure I lent it to Logan, and then it's, it's this is what I'm saying. Yeah. You know exactly where it is. Yeah. Motherfucker. Lo- Logan doesn't know where it is. Yeah, it's gone. Um, Lost in the source. Does yeah. the store have one? I think this went missing like three years ago. Oh my god. <laughs> I haven't had to use it since How? Access Code came out. I would say probably lent it to him at like Oceanix in 2019 because that was like that plus Dingyusu was your end board for Maybe. like OTKing. But yeah, my, my Brawl Sword is gone. Yeah. So, not that it's going to come up for any of our listeners other than people that are here, but top tip uh, if Logan asks you to borrow a card, say no. Because he will steal it. There are a few that that is relevant to It's just a helpful hint. Who knows? I might, um, I might look up how much a secret Boral Sword goes for, and I might just buy one. I feel like it's not going to be that expensive. I feel yeah, like you can just replace it and then send Logan the invoice. But it's not my original one. My original one has sentimental value to me. I mean, being that you haven't seen it for a while and you're now buying one, you can just pretend it's your original one. Yeah, but there's it's no way to know. There's Lu- no way. There's no way to know. Lewis gave me a good deal on that. Thanks, Lewis. Ah, uh, I miss the days where Lewis played. Actually. I miss Lewis, but I don't miss Lewis playing because Lewis would always play. He doesn't miss all the guys. Cringe decks. Um, anyway, moving back to reprints. Um, so, uh, Afterburners, Miracle Rupture, um, Chaos Emperor Dragon of Armageddon, which I think is Pendulum. That one. is the prize card, yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Ubel, which all three. really needed a reprint. Yes. Uh, all three Ubells, which, again, kind of needed to reprint, but have not been printed in Battles of Legends, so it's just chucking in because it's needed. Um, Destiny Hero Malicious, Extra Wonder Hero Driver, E-Emergency Call, uh, Doggeran, Kamungus, Radian, Jizakiru, uh, Number 54, Lionheart, Number 77, Seven Sins, uh, Utopia, the Astral Language one. That's yeah. getting an ultra print, so making the one that was meant to be a highly desired card in the original Battles of Legend even worse value than it was already before this. That is such a weird decision. It is a very bizarre decision. You'd think it would be like... I thought the whole, the, the whole point was to be collectible. Not yeah. Because like, it doesn't I have... Mean, that was the point of the Starlights, right? And then they just went like, QCRs! QCRs for everyone! Remember how when the card came out it was like $500? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, currently, before this reprint, it was only like $150. Mm-hmm. Because they had reprinted Utopia in every possible rarity after reprinting this. Like, it now has a quarter century rare. It an has ulti. an ulti. I don't know if it has a starlight. This was the starlight, technically. Yeah. Uh, and now it's just that it's reprinting this version. This card's going to be like $80 when this set comes out. If that. I will gladly pay $50 for this. 
Well, for the Ultra? Now that I've said that out loud, I don't know if I'll pay $50 for the, for the, <laughs> the actual one, the nice one. Hmm. If you walk up to me at YCS with that card in your hand and say 50 bucks, please, I will pay you the 50 bucks. I'll just steal it and run. Sorry. I'll just steal it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, my mic was on. Say it again. <laughs> um, moving down the list, we've got uh, Gimmick Puppet Nightmare. Uh, Harpy Perfumer, Quick Launch, Security Dragon, uh, Darkness Metal Dragon, Dragon <coughs> Dark Steel, which I think is I think the, that's the link. link. Yes. Uh, Trigula, the Fusion Trigula. Uh, Judgment Dragon, the Synchro one. Is this um, the first Security Dragon reprint, by the way? Sorry? Do you want to gloss over that? Yeah, I think it is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then it moves on to the commons, of which the list is very long, and I care not to read it. I thought we were going to read the whole thing. I was like, damn, Jake's really padding this out. No, no, no. No. He's gone like, hard. Yeah, I understand that there's news to be made, but yeah, I don't really want to read through okay. a list of 700 <laughs> commons. Um, notably, Lightsworn is getting reprinted in there, which is handy. Yeah, pretty much the entire Lightsworn core, bar Punishment Dragon. Yep. Yeah. Buy my Punishment Dragons. Yeah. We've got plenty available. If he runs out of Punishment Dragons, buy my Punishment Dragon. So is it, is it the Twilight Swans in there as well? Or is it... No, okay. just, just, just the, the ones that were reprinted in the original Battles of Legends set. So oh, right. Everything in front of you. Yes, yes, okay. Except this one. This one. This one. Minerva, no, Garrett. That one. Not that one. So that that maybe that don't think yeah. so. Oh no no no. No, I don't think the fighter no. was. That one, that one. No. Wait, is that is that's that Michael? That's that's that, Michael. That's Michael. Okay. Not that one. Yeah, not that one. Okay. Uh, great reference for our Spotify listeners. Um, yeah. So uh, we move on to some questions. If you do were we? aware, because there's a UDS to discuss, Jake. Well, we don't know the result. Oh, wait, no, we do kind of know the results. So, um, yeah, UDS was happening over the last two days? Yes. Question mark? No. Uh, Just the one day? The one day. There's another day tomorrow. Day one was the uh, the Invitational for Master Duel. So uh, I wasn't okay. invited to. Yeah, apparently it I was... Uh, friends. <laughs> apparently it was bad. What? Like, some of the people that were invited should not have been invited. I remember Leo saying in the chat there was some abysmal act, like gameplay happening. Yeah, I didn't get to watch it because I was building the deck. For oh, today. No, I the last time they did this, it was the same where they just invited a bunch of streamers. No, oh. and they were like, "Play this," <laughs> and they're like, "You're paying me to be here, so sure." I don't know what this is. I understand. Get like... live interview. Yeah, I watched the anime when I was little. <laughs> oh, so you've been playing ever since? No, no, no. I picked up Master Duel like last year. <laughs> Last year is in 45 days ago when please, I got booked for this. Please don't check my Steam library. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the top four of the actual championship, uh, unsurprisingly, we have uh, three Fire Decks and one non-Fire Deck, two Fire King Snake Eye, one Normal Snake Eye, and then uh, Gimmick Puppet Turbo is what I imagine it was. I haven't seen the list, but I can only imagine probably. at that level, it's probably just... It's a 99% chance. Like Yeah. But... Uh, the thing I've appreciated the most about this stream is it is pretty much exclusively high level play there isn't like scrubs showing yeah, up yeah yeah um, so it was really good to actually sit down and watch so um, the first the first few feature matches of every was yes is a bit of a slog to get through yeah because you're just like you know and Jesse like, Cotton FTK is a child live on stream <laughs> 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 typically that's also the ones we get to watch yeah because that's the start of the stream and the uh, and it's five like, hours it takes to do those first three rounds yeah. is we go to us till one in the morning. It's like 11pm when we get the first game, if we're lucky. Yeah. yeah. So it, it was good to wake up this morning and have some high-level play to like sit down and watch. <laughs> I really appreciated the... It was Flunderies versus Shooping. And like game three, he gets shifted and he showed the line of how to play around on the shifter and still get to like Appaloosa plus so on. Um, really appreciated that. The fire... Well, I, don't, I don't know the way to interpret this. Uh, I guess today I just kind of quick scooped. Um, Fire is playing Parallel Exceed to be able to... A, if, you're, if you open Parallel Exceed and your Fire, your Ash gets impermed, you can just link it into Link Rebo, reveal Parallel Exceed, summon, fire, go into the Fire Exceed, search the Populous combo. Or you can go... Um, what's the other one? Oh, you can just summon Dweller. Make Dweller at the end of a combo. Yeah. If it doesn't get negated, you just make Dweller. And yeah. Then you've just won the fire matchup. So yeah. Cool. Good work. Today when it happened to me, I was like, I can, I think I can play through this. 
uh, and then hand traps started coming out of uh, his hand, and I was like, next game, please scoop it up. I can win it based on what's here. can't win it based on what's, what's here. What's there is the problem. Um, so, uh, as I was attempting to say before, we move on to some questions. Uh, if you weren't aware, we do have a Discord link will be in the description below. Feel free to jump in, say hi, and ask us some questions. Uh, so, our first question this week, if my uh, phone stops jumping... Um, there is a gimmick puppet on the stream. Oh. There is, yeah. The gimmick puppet Wait, player are is they literally just... playing. So, we've got the, the UDS stream on. <laughs> They're just skipping... Anime episodes, anime episodes. They're just no they're, they're just showing clips or anything. Yeah, like who knows what's going on? Because like they were just showing the Yu-Gi-Oh Arcana duel. Yeah. And now we're showing the gimmick puppet duel. Yeah, it's the gimm like, gimmick yeah. puppet John Grander. This is like one of the three episodes of this anime I've actually seen. I really don't like Zex. That's right, you Zexel fans. I read the first two Should volumes I? of the manga. Yeah. Uh, so, anyway, uh, first question this week comes to us from Rai Guy. Uh, for those of you who play video games, what's your go-to genre? Uh, personally, he's a big fan of fighting games and roguelike games. I don't know what that means. So, I'm assuming that's like Assassin's Creed. No, game. so roguelikes... He's too, old. he's too old for a roguelike. So, there was a, like, a procedurally generated like adventure game back in like the 80s called Rogue. Oh, mm. right. So, okay. the, games like Hades or The Binding of Isaac, where you start a run with like no items or anything like that you progress and then you die and then you, you start again and then you've got rogue likes which are more like that and then you've got rogue lights which have like permanent progression attached to it so it's like you can get permanent upgrades for your character that you can like spec into between runs right okay you die you go back yeah go again that sounds uh, awful Harry is good thing that's why we got Harry on <laughs> I would have just told you you go and you die and you start over but it's not the same <laughs> uh, so yeah favourite video game genre I'm sorry genre. what was the question? your favourite video game genre a few years ago I would have given a not straightforward answer the answer is sports games because it's all I have time to play <laughs> that's all I do now is just play sports games unless like something comes out that I want to play that's fun like I just put a bunch of you done like forty hours in the power world, didn't you? I don't know. <laughs> I finished it. I don't know how much. He probably doesn't, he probably doesn't want it. to know. Yeah. Yeah. If it was, I wasn't playing on Steam, so I couldn't just check it. I'm yeah. Playing Xbox. So yeah. I was like, yeah. Unless it gives me an achievement for playing eight hundred hours, I don't know how many hours I played. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, gimmick puppet died. It's so a from today. <laughs> um. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah, so I've I've just finished the new Prince of Persia, so that's a that's a two D Metroidvania, which has been really fun. Um, so I, I enjoy Metroidvanias. I've just started Blasphemous Two, um, but I also do enjoy my roguelikes as well. I've been playing the um, Blaz Blue Entropy Effect, which is based on the fighting game franchise. It's a roguelike uh, roguelite, sorry, because it's got the permanent progression on the outside. Two um, D, you fight the enemies, but be because it's based on a fighting game franchise, your in-game combos are like fighting game combos. Oh, yeah. And the in-game progression, instead of finding items, there, there are items, but you also get potentials, which are unlocking more fighting combos. So like different inputs will give you new moves that you can then use. Does it have knockoff fatalities? Uh, no, I don't Damn. believe so. <clears throat> but yeah, so, Add that feature. And then I also enjoy like survival horror and just like horror games in general so like i've just replayed all of the resident evils not all of the resident evils but like resident evil uh remake two three four and then seven and eight and now i'm going I back to you to skip six but not five i i just haven't gone around to five i own it on my switch i just okay. i've just been playing other things and I then like five Five is not a great game, but it holds yeah. holds weight in Ben's heart. And then I've just got um, uh, Punch that rock. Signalis to play at some point, which is a another survival horror that's very much like Resident Evil. Point of Ben's life, uh, the bit in Resident Evil Five where you punch the rock. Oh yeah, critical. when I when I was a wee laddie, a wee wee laddie, none of my me and my friends could hit the X button fast <laughs> enough to punch the rock. So yeah, yeah, Chris, Chris Redfield punching the boulder is ages. yeah. And then one day, like one of my friends did it, and we we're like, "Holy shit!" I don't know if you've we can seen... finally progressed the game further. Have you seen the clip that's from one of the CGI movies where it's Chris Redfield and Wesker having that shootout? 
maybe five meters apart from each other, and it goes <laughs> for like six minutes. <laughs> None of them get hit. <laughs> it's. I'll, I'll find it after this. It's absolutely incredible. So, uh, my gaming history, uh, primarily... It's, it's, it's going to be Kingdom Hearts. And Pokemon. JRPGs, in general. So, Pokemon's not a um, JRPG. I know this. Pokemon's for scrubs. Okay, you also play Pokemon, yeah, so... I'm not saying it's not a game you can't play. I'm just saying, if you make your entire life about it, it's not. <laughs> cool, so yeah. can I continue now? Cool. Uh, so yeah, JRPGs have been a uh, big one uh, in Jake history. Uh, so started with Final Fantasy VIII. Uh, didn't play seven or nine until I was much older, uh, just because other games came out in the meantime. Like ten, ten was an incredible game. Final Fantasy ten. Uh, ten two was awful. Um, like if Love Actually was a JRPG, it's fucking terrible. <laughs> I'm um, impressed that you have the time. Uh, would have had the time back in the day. I'm like, I'm impressed that you have the time to commit to these games, especially well, to watch the cutscenes um, and finish the games. I think uh, did Ten Two let you skip the cutscenes, or was that just? I think Thirteen it... let you skip cutscenes. Yeah, I, I know because a lot. I skipped a lot of cutscenes. Still was like, oh, I don't think I still want to do this. <laughs> I don't. I don't understand how Thirteen got as many sequels as it did. Like, they just got stuck on Lightning as a character, and they're like, yes, give me Lightning, give me Lightning! I'd assume the engine was easy to play around with. That had to be it. Maybe, and maybe they just got stuck in, like, dev of other stuff, because I know one of them, I think it was the one, um, I want to say 14, but I don't think it's 14. 14 is the MMO. No, so it's not 14. Maybe it was 15. I think 15... Best game ever. I think Final it, Fantasy 14 online. Uh, the game's so good they sold out of digital codes. 15 was the one with, like, Noctis and Pronto yes. and all that. So yeah. I think that 15 took them a long time to develop. And they may have even had the same thing that Kingdom Hearts 2 had, where they started on one engine, got to, like, a certain point. They're like, nah, changing engine, start again. That's how Final Fantasy games work. That's how they're all made. I'm, oh. not, I'm not joking there. I'm not meaning joke. Like, all of them, the guy notoriously takes so long and changes his mind that they will get three quarters away through development and he'll just be like, nah, change it. And here we are. That's why they fired him from Kingdom Hearts 3. Because they were like, he was like, nah, changing it. And they are like, we're going to, you go work on the next Final Fantasy. We'll just get someone in here to finish this off. And they did that. That's probably why we're <laughs> still getting Kingdom Hearts 4, like... I think it's the next year. Coming next decade. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I don't take their dates as like a thing anymore because it just breaks my heart. Yeah, how could you? Like, there's, there's no there's no trust there for that. I remember we went to a regionals in um, Penrith ages ago and we're waiting for the store to open and on their front window, super faded, was like a pre-order <laughs> poster for Kingdom Hearts in 2016. I was like, this is the biggest lie that history's <laughs> ever told. Um... Outside of JRPGs, though, um, also uh, like playing racing games. So, like Need for Speed Underground 2. Um, Need for Speeds were a lot of them. Gran Turismo to a point. Um, but the thing is, I'm not very good at them. I very much take the ethos of, like, I'm going to wait for whoever I'm racing against to get to the corner and use them as a guardrail as such and just oh. sort of use them to meter out my speed somewhat, bump them off the track. Uh, to slow myself down. I'm not a big fan of the brakes. I uh, so I used to have like the full racing setup at home, and I was once did a playthrough of F1. So I played F1 uh, yeah. on like the hardest difficulty for season mode, and I was drive along, drive along, drive along. Now I made the mistake of having a wireless steering wheel, ah. <laughs> so I'm going down a straight, doing like three or I would have been like in the two hundreds. I'm like flying along, flying along, flying along, and the, the steering wheel disconnects, and I'm like, shit. <laughs> I like slam into a wall, and it ends my season. No. Oh. I was like, hmm. That's, that's a lot of time and effort that I put into that, because I would race the entire races and the entire time trials and everything, and I was like, I've just lost like a good solid 50 hours I've put into the oh season. Oh my god. All because my steering wheel disconnected. It's like, 
The only... that, and I never played a racing game again. <laughs> yeah, understandable. The, but... the only racing game I've ever been interested in racing <laughs> game is um, Driver San Francisco. Um, Heard of it, but not I remember playing that. So that's, that's the one where, like, you can... You don't physically, but you hop out between cars. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like GTA Lite. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Um, there was another... I don't know what you'd call the genre. I guess, like, the Mario Kart-esque genre. Like, racing, but not the same sort of racing. Just like, like the party game It's races. not a racing sim, it's a racing... There's another term for it. Arcade racer. Yeah. Arcade, arcade racer, yeah. 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 I don't yeah. mind an arcade racer. There was one that was, like, super obscure on PS2. Maybe PS3? I think PS3, called Blur, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The one where everything explodes as you drive past it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was like Mario Kart, but you play in like traditional type cars. Like you'd right. have like junk beetles and stuff like that, and then you'd get like full rocket launchers and stuff to like yeah. hit at shit. Um, I really liked it. <coughs> it's like racing twisted metal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I enjoyed that a lot. Uh, is there anything else? Um, I, I also enjoyed like Souls likes, obviously. Yes. I was gonna also raise that. Good. Yeah. Well, that was the last like new genre where I was like, time to dive into this. Was Elden Ring? No, oh, it's so good. Like I traditionally not liked Soulsborne games, and was just like, it. it I want to play this though, it, so it, I made it, an effort it, to learn it, it. It takes a moment, and then you have that. You have the that moment where everything sort of just clicks. Yeah. Like I remember my first attempt at any Souls like was Bloodborne, mm. and I didn't realize in the Hunter's Dream that you're meant to get the weapons there. So I went back and I spent about an hour just trying to play the game because uh, as you spawn there's a there's a wolf that's about half health yep. but like not like Elden Ring wolves they're, they're bigger they yeah, do more damage yeah. and I'm like I'm just slapping this thing I'm doing five damage is it meant to be this hard and then I go back and I decide I'll oh, watch a walk through on YouTube because I'm probably missing something it's like bruh you, you hit it you kill it in three hits otherwise yeah it's like this is the worst <laughs> enemy in the game yeah yeah off you go but then I, then I jumped over to Dark Souls 3 as my first like proper Souls like and I played so much of that and I've just been doing um, randomizers every now and then I want to do a, a Pokemon randomizer like do a randomizer Nuzlocke of like Emerald or I don't know Soul Silver or something but I want to play it on the TV I need to figure that out how can you do that I mean there has to be a way for you to be able to connect your computer to the TV without actually having to move the computer to the TV I think it's just plug in a HDMI cable to my laptop that's get, I was like, about, to, I was, I was about to say you can do that get yeah. a wireless controller with the dongle yeah. and then you just run the emulator you just keep the mouse on mouse next to you for your setup yeah Raspberry Pi's here are just so expensive yeah. and hard to find like Jcar sells them but they're always sold out because they sell them at like an affordable price yeah anyway next question anywho um, just um, for housekeeping uh, because we have got a lot of questions and we have taken up a lot of time I will be saving some for next week, so if your question doesn't get asked this week, I have taken screenshots. We will be asking it later. Ask uh, some screenshot. Yeah. Uh, so, next question is from 6R6. Which, in your opinion, is the worst and best reprint in Battles of Legend Chapter 1? Uh, the worst reprint? Um, I, don't, I don't think anything's a bad reprint in that set. Like, everything needed something. Like... I'm just not invested in the set enough to really have an opinion like that. It's like, they're just getting reprinted. Like, I'd have to I, properly sit down and look at everything. I think the quality of the commons in that set is commendable. That's part of the reason why I think that set is so good. Like, just the overall quality of the shit that you're getting to fill your packs is, like, good enough that if there's a garbage card in there, so what? Yeah. Like, yeah, I pulled an entire common Light Swan engine. Like, cool, sick, awesome. Like, if you're a player that didn't have that, you didn't have that. Best reprint though is probably the um, the prize card uh, pendulum the, judgment dragon or uh, chaos yeah, emperor. Chaos emperor. Yeah, yeah, that's probably the best reprint. That, that's been floating around like what 60, 70 if not more. Yeah. Yo-Yo is pretty heavily. Yeah. like when it's like, played, I was gonna say, is, is, dra yeah. is dragon ring dra dra dragon link <laughs> relevant? It was a demon size there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it wasn't intentional. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, no. He's thinking will. of Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> I was, was going to say dragon link relevant. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I think the best reprint in there for me would probably be the Photon Lord, because that card was obscenely. Yeah. Oh yeah, Phot Photon Lord's a good one. That one's just due for a reprint. Expensive yeah. for the reason that it just didn't have a reprint. Yeah, that pretty was much. 
Um, next question again Hi. is from what? Your reprint. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, the gimmick puppet that I already own. There we go. You said the word. Yeah. Uh, so the next question is also from six r six. What is your favourite instrument, musical or otherwise? I'm not sure what the otherwise refers to. Instrument of war, bazooka. I don't. Why instruments? I used to play the drums. It's a bit. I'm not. I don't play any instruments. Like, but my genre of music that I enjoy are like metal and things like that primarily hit the drums Harry hit them hard nah um, so I, I guess I enjoy guitars as an instrument like I don't know it's like hard, to, hard, hard to answer that question like Jake, properly do you have a serious answer before I take the piss yeah uh, so um, I from the ages of 16 to about 19 played piano which is his family has money no <laughs> uh, because they owned a piano yeah, which got stolen, if you recall, which I told the whole story about. <laughs> I, I forgot. I remember how funny it was that someone stole a fucking piano. Yes, but you assumed that they'd come into our house late at night yeah. and just wheeled out the piano. Yeah, I'm no, still imagining for context, that. we sent it away to get repaired and they never sent it back. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I like... For further context, it was a pianola, and the reason they stole it is because it was a self playing piano. They stole all the parts. Right. So by the time we got it back, it was just a piano, just and I got it back at the age of 16. You sent it to anyway. a piano chop shop. <laughs> effectively, yeah. Effectively. So, um, I, I just want to point out how hilarious it would be. Just like, Jake's like 15, he wakes up at like 2 in the morning, walks down the lounge room, it's like fucking Dora the Explorer and Swiper, and just like pushes his piano at the front door. <laughs> That's how they fund their adventures. These <laughs> yeah, was... yeah, the piano chop shops. Um, so, yeah, from 16 to 19, I played piano. Um, <coughs> I am not particularly good at reading sheet music, um, but I think it's called Suzuki. Um, I learnt by ear. My tone is very good. So uh, the it's not time... Suzuki. It's Nissan. No. That's Nissan. Shut up. You <laughs> said you would wait for me to finish before you took the piss. Okay, so continue. how about you shut up? Continue. So anyway, um, the time that I should have spent practicing, I didn't. And then I would just practice with the teacher who was in the room who wanted me to progress in the new thing, but I would wait to hear how I was supposed to play it when she played it and then just mimic her. So that's effectively how I learned piano. Big waste of time and money, but it was my money at the time because I was working part-time, so it was fine. So you um, learn piano the way you're supposed to learn playing the drums? Effectively, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, and then after high school I just didn't keep up with it. Um, but, so that's an instrument that I like that's attainable, but an instrument that I like that isn't attainable and that is very difficult is the violin. The violin's insanely difficult. Okay. My joke answer was any instrument where it's the ones that you hold and you blow into and you move your fingers. Uh, because they all seem incredibly easy to learn and like experts at that craft are just like, I feel like you've committed way too much time to something I could learn in an afternoon. Bro's gonna pick up a recorder and play hot cross buns. <laughs> like, I think, I, I That's think about I could the level up, I think Ben would get to as well. I think I could pick up a saxophone <laughs> And play anything. I, Gigs, think... I reckon if you gave me a day in a saxophone, I could learn anything on the saxophone. I have no respect for people that are good at that <laughs> instrument. <laughs> like, it can't be hard, because every sound that the saxophone makes is like an elongation. So it can't be that hard to be like, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I implore anybody who listens to this podcast, if you have any wind instrument, to get in touch with us and I will get this man to try and play it and just see how good he actually is. I don't want to put my mouth up something else. That's also a reason why I would you never learn those it. instruments. No, it doesn't matter. What do you mean it doesn't matter? I can put my mouth next to something that someone else has put their mouth on. Especially and that's why metal. Ben's single. Um, Jake just took question. a return serve. <laughs> <laughs> will I encounter with a forehand? Tune back in three weeks. He's going to hit me. Call the police. <laughs> 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 Next question is from Raga. In your opinion, uh, is the what? What is the max that a competitive staple should cost? That's a giant question. No, no, Jesse's question is that an answer. That's an answer. <laughs> okay, I respect your effort in that answer, Jesse. Yeah, uh, man's going full. What was the question? Sorry. Uh, what is the max that a competitive staple should cost? One hundred thirty dollars. Yep. I don't really like spending over a hundred. 
Like I remember uh, I don't, that like used to be the ceiling, and we discussed this on a recent podcast that that was the most that they could charge you in room for a car. That's you why that it. was the ceiling. You yeah, yeah, yeah. So they weren't you don't allow you weren't allowed to charge more than a hundred USD for a car to YCS, <coughs> which is why like we never saw like um, brush. Yeah, never got above one thirty. Yeah, because at the time conversion set the bar at one thirty. Yeah, which is also now why my arbitrary number is one thirty. Because like I like I don't like spending that much money on you know cardboard like three ninety for a play set of cards fucking hurts. Yeah, like I remember it was really hard to get my play set of Forbidden Droplets when that was like a top tier meta staple before any of the reprints. I got very lucky. I managed to get mine for three hundred for the set on auction. That's yeah. that's sort of my my bar. Yeah, like like I after I think it was a locals where I played against Jake and Jake had bought the case. Yeah. So he used it on me, and he also used talents on me, and I was like, "Oh, Nikita collectibles! Oh, you still have <laughs> Send me this, please. Thank you." Yeah, like it was right before it spiked. So I think I paid like two fifty a playset. Yeah. On those, and I was like, I I think the the talents was cheaper. So I think the talents only cost me like one eighty on the playset. I was like. Sick, awesome, and the next week they were worth over a hundred each, and I was like, "Cause I, yeah, I remember, awesome. I remember talents like after they spiked to you know 100, 120, whatever. When they did come back down, they were still at like eighty each. Yeah, but that Rise of the Duels was such an insane set. That was a great set. Jake made a great post. I did. I didn't get a Starlight in that set. Well, actually, so not true. I didn't get a Starlight in the case. I then bought random packs at Zing and pulled a um, Starlight Tactics. Like he says this, but he also. In a set where you didn't always pull a playset of all your secret rares, you pull like three talents, three droplets, oh my god, and then a bunch of all the other shit. That I, was good. I, yeah, was all the, that all it the a perfectly stuff was in balanced well. case. In my uh, entire history of buying product, that was my Magnus Open. That was the best I've ever done in buying didn't any you, product. Like, just need to get like one Nadir servant, and that was it. Or was it just one Ecclesia? Oh, um, I mean, Ecclesia. I, think I don't think way. that was that hard to get. I think it was a Nadir. I remember. And maybe a Maximus, but I'm not sure. I plussed super hard on that call. Because, like, <laughs> when that got announced, I think I brought it through, like, Team Trade Binder. Because, like, I was, like, standing on the side of the road and I got saw the notification on Facebook. I was like, oh, okay, cool. I just, like, stood there for five minutes and, like, bought it. They were charging, like, $40 on a Deer Servant, like, $70 on Maximus. Yeah. And I was like, oh, Maximus must be the expensive one. I'll just get the Nadirs for now and, like, I'll worry <laughs> about the Maximus later. And, and then the prices I, went. Just, just, <laughs> I do remember that. I remember it being super, like, reversed at yeah. some point. Nadir was for some reason cheap, even though it searched them from anywhere. Because yes, people were like, well, the Maximus is the one you need to resolve. And it's like, A, it's a one of. B, your opponent can counter it incredibly easily. So the card just plummeted in price a week later. And then, like, not long after that, it just became a terrible card to resolve because it was like. Yeah. Oh, everyone, everyone was playing counters yeah. or playing the deck you were yeah. playing. I think that card's only expensive now because it hasn't been reprinted. That's Which it. is that, Nadir? Uh, no, um, Maximus. Maximus has been reprinted. Has it? It had yeah, an ultra reprint. Ultra reprint. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> it's expensive Last time I checked, it was like 30 bucks. But even I still, like, okay. like, I think it's only had the one reprint since. Okay. Like, like so it's got the original secret, the ultra, which I think was the Megatin following. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then I it it wasn't in rarity collection with the Deers and the Ecclesia. Yeah. Neither was the Fledderly. Yeah. Makes so sense. Just just hovering around, I guess. If you need a Maximus, Ben has them for sale. Um, I'm asking full price. <laughs> <laughs> um, question from Rai Guy: What do you th- when do you think Yu-Gi-Oh became modern Yu-Gi-Oh? Easy. Duelist of Once. Yeah. Shadol, Burning Abyss. Yes. And then tell to just hang it out. They're fine. That's when we went from like I summon a hand and I pass to because uh, like I, I summon from deck. Go, 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 I go. when I started playing the next set to come out was Shadow Spectres, which had Ghost Tricks, mm. um, and then the set after that was Legacy of the Valiant with a uh, Stolen Honor Arc One Hundred One, which was uh, huge at the time. And then not even six months later, I think we got Castell, which just completely was, nullified uh, its existence. Yeah. But um, yeah, just the should all like should all fusion has set the precedent for fusion spells in the future. Um, Burning abyss resolving as long as I hit the grave was just relevant, and yep. it, it was a stun deck for a bit resolving Phoenix Wing Windblast, 
um, and then resolving Fire Lake from new challenges, I think, yeah. is it set after? Yeah. Which is like, pop two, pop three is crazy, because... Yeah, all your shit's also going to plus. Yeah, well, that's it. It's like, yeah. oh, pop Graph, summon Seer, uh, Dante, add Skarm back from Grave to Hand, whatever. Yeah. It was absurd. And then Telenos was just a rank 4 toolbox, just making the best of the rank 4s that existed, which like, the pile wasn't bad. And then when you started doing the tribal loops with the Call of the Horneds and the um, the the one that summons back the defense is a worm, yeah. it was just three more copies of that. And just getting the in, like, incremental advantage and then just overwhelming your opponent. As shit as it seems, I would like to have seen drag, uh, Dragon Rulers be in that format. Yeah. Just for the, like, just to see what would have happened. Because I don't think Dragon Rulers are that much better than any of those decks. Yeah, yeah. Because that, that, that's the point when Modern New Gear started, where everything just went... So, to that point, I have a counter yep. argument for the point where Yu Gi Oh became Modern New Gear. And that is... He's going to show a Link Monster at us. No. Like, we'll uh, Link Monster. Flames of Destruction. It's because where we, we first nightmares. got the Nightmares. Where you had a generic extra deck kind of thing that most people were playing. Uh, and that also like it began that super heavy combo variant of style game and you had a lot more generic links as well that enabled a lot more people to sort of do stuff that wasn't available to the game before this I get it and it's not an invalid answer I just think that the jump from like like playing hands to playing Burning Abyss is you gotta remember that 20, much bigger jump. 2014 was the same year that Soul Charge released yeah. and that was the year that Infernity won Worlds yeah. which was I would like to say the precursor to these infinite negate and boards because pretty much just did that <laughs> oh you're ending on barrier break 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 and then probably like a key beetle save zone on vanities yeah and then it, it's it's the point when we went from uh, if I normal summon I might live for three turns to you're dead bitch <laughs> and to to address the discussion of generic it's uh, the the rank four toolbox was the the generic for the time because the rank four uh, pool was the the most expansive, so if you wanted to play something that was a toolbox extra deck, you would go for you'd get rank fours. You'd be playing your tellers. Um, Infernity primarily did the same thing. It also had access to rank threes because of Necromancer. But Why is ultimate offering still banned? This is a card that should be banned. Uh, well, I, I can see an argument for it because like you've got a lot more cards that'll actually give you turn one access to it and stuff like that so it's banned because of red gadget I don't know if that's true it's what you play it was rank 4 toolbox from the gadget engine no I understand that but like as to why it's not coming some, back I think yeah, a lot more some. stuff has changed since then what like what's gonna happen your opponent's gonna summon a Flanderese it's already no, gonna get another no, normal summon no Ben you're thinking too small oh no Anyway, I activated Morganite. I now get to draw two and normal summon Again, twice. Again, that's not... To, anyway, I'm not getting into this argument. I'm just saying that like, there are infinitely better cards than Ultimate Offering. Ultimate Offering should not be banned. Bring it back. No. Um, and the last question for Putting today... Putting on my next ban list prediction. <laughs> Mark and my words right now. Drawing a line in the sand, and that line is Ultimate Offering coming back. That's never going to happen. Uh, last question comes to us from 6 r 6 when making a sandwich or toast, what do you do with the smidge of spread left on the knife after spreading uh, the layer of whatever it is? Uh, shrug and smear it on the bread, uh, bread substitute, or scrape it back into the container, or wash it off in oh. the sink. Oh. Whoever puts it back in the container should be shot. You should be shot, yes. Uh, you rub it off on the corner of the bread. Yeah. Um, I tend to just like run my finger along the knife and then eat it. Well, I wouldn't do that with something like Vegemite. If it's like Coward. Nutella, you just lick the knife. Yeah, like there's no, there's no. I'm oh, licking the knife. It's <coughs> silly. You see, that's a butter knife. If it cuts your tongue, you're soft. Well, even tongue if soft it, in it. Even if it is a sharp knife, if you manage to cut yourself on it, you sort of deserve that. Like, it's yeah. not that difficult. Peanut butter, I will lick off the knife. A lot of things you'd lick peanut butter off. <laughs> 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 yep <laughs> that'll do us for today uh, thank you all very much for listening and watching oh um we didn't get a lot of votes in our last poll um i can't really think of something else um to vote on i, I had something know. earlier but i forgot what it was okay ben's distracted by the I'm, zaxel stuff i'm wondering if we're still on gimmick puppets uh, we are what was the best reprint in battles of legend yeah you, that'll you do. answer at home yeah brian's um, not gonna put the poll up for five days so there's not gonna be many yeah, getting quick 
Um, so yeah, if you're listening on Spotify, <coughs> vote on the polls, favourite. If you're watching on YouTube, like and subscribe. Jump in our Discord, ask us some questions for next week, and we'll catch you all then. Peace. Bye.